How did you get into comics? How did you start selling comics? Ooh, I started reading comics when I was young. When I was when I was like six years old. I, 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 you know, my mother would bring comic books in the house, and I would look at the covers and open them and look through them. And I couldn't read at the time, so I would put my own words to them. You know, try. To <laughs> was that here, here in the city? Huh? Here in the city. No, this was back home in South America. I was born in Guyana. Oh, GT guy. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Oh wow. You know, there's a lot of comic books there. I mean, I read, I read classic stuff. I read like. Uh, Strange Tales, uh, First Nick Fury. Um, I read um, early Captain America's Tales of Suspense stuff. You know, back who was your favorite there. back then? Back then, it was Captain America. Yeah, it was Captain America. Can't knock Cap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I said, I you know at that time I couldn't read, so I called him A Star because he had an A on his head and a star <laughs> on his chest. You know? <laughs> and that got me to learn to read because I was like, I want I want to know what they're saying. I want to know what's going on. I could see the action, but I wanted to know what was going on. Wow. You know. That's cool. Yeah. So, here, when you got here to the States, and how long you got into the... What was your favorite... What was your comic store out here in the States? In, um, in the neighborhood? I can't remember the name of it. We, um... When I came here in 1972, we stayed in Brooklyn for two years, and then we moved to, um... Um, we moved to... To, to Ridgewood. Mm -hmm. And, um... There was a comic book store up at, um... Knickerbocker and Myrtle Avenue. I don't know the name of it. Um... Back in 19, 19, what was that, 77 during the blackout? Uh -huh. it, it burned down. Oh, boy. Yeah, they lost a lot of good stuff. I mean, I remember buying Iron Man 3 out of there for like for like $2. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You still got it? No, man. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, that was the store I would go to every chance I got. And then in 1975, we moved out to Rockaway. But I would still get on the train and go out there to that store to buy my stuff. Yes. They had they had the wooden boxes, just like I have here. Mm -hmm. And um, the comics were, they weren't, like back then they weren't like real, people didn't really bag and board stuff. They just put the books in and that was it, you just bought it. You know, there wasn't any real bags and boards. I was surprised um, a few years back, a friend of mine gave me back a giant size X-Men one that I sold him. Uh, I sold that and like 12 other books to him for five bucks uh, back back then because I read it and I sold it to him. He still had it wow. and he had it in plastic, the, the plastic he put it in. And I was like, well, where'd you get the plastic from? Because like I said, it, there wasn't like really any plastic around there. He sent away to, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Robert Plant <laughs> from the back of the magazines for a, a, a pack of them. And he put all the comics in them and he gave it back to me and still had the same it, 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 you know, after all those years, the, the plastic yellows. Mm -hmm. So it was all yellow with the with the faded tape tape down. I didn't even open it. I still got it in the house. I haven't opened it yet. That's cool. Yeah. So what got you into doing com uh, your store? Tell us how you got your store. Ooh, I used to sell comics back in the 90s. Um, I sold on the streets. You know, when they had that big boom and everybody was selling, you know, I was selling on the streets downtown. Wall Street? Yeah. Yeah, yeah me and... uh. Me and Vinny Zazulo from Metropolis, we were partners on the street together. No, I was buying it. I was buying on Wall Street at the time. So yeah, 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 yeah. And um, yeah, I was in front of um, I was in front of Record Explosion. Oh wow! There were like two or three guys. Yeah. That uh, I remember this happened. I picked up a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, it was me, time. Gus. Um, there was a guy, Tony King. Um, yeah, there was a, there, yeah, there was a, there was a few of us out there. My my friend Victor, um, he was at the booth with me. He was the original guy because he used to set up where the where the the Grace Papaya. Tall guy, big. No, short. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, short Spanish dude. Yeah, because he he used to set up on the awning where the Grace Papaya was, where the where the, um, the, the hula hands was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, and he started doing it, and I saw him doing it, and I started talking to him. And it was 1993. I went out there and I started doing it. You know, we made some money. Then, and then when that, when, when, when that whole, when the bubble burst back in the 90s, I went back to work. But I, I was still doing conventions. Yeah, I was still doing conventions, and um, you know, I started working here in '98. I started working at the bar next door in '98, and. The owner, of, the owner of the bar owned the whole building. So how much? Yeah. So I'm gonna 
you know, do like an uh, guesstimate here. So we're talking about about thirty years in comics. Yeah, yeah. So how, how much has stuff changed from say when you started on Wall Street to like, if you can get that start, like that midway, and like where we are now, like how much of a change would you say has happened? A lot, <laughs> a lot. As far as far as the comics industry, or as far as oh the whole thing. I mean, when I was, I mean, I started reading years ago. It was really the stories, or yeah. like the cover. I might do that, or I collected certain characters. Uh, now, you know, I come over and I mean, collecting comics when I was a kid was cheap. Yeah. Now, if you want to collect comics, you have to have a job, like a full time exactly. job. Exactly. Exactly. Are you fun. kidding? Freaking ten titles is is forty bucks. You know, back in the day, ten titles used to be ten bucks. You know, <laughs> now ten titles forty bucks a week. It's a week. You know, and then and then and then you have all the variant covers, the special covers. You know, you got you have, you have all this stuff. It's actually a lot more. You gotta have a, a full time job. You gotta hide money from the missus <laughs> in order to get this done. It's more of a niche business now. Yeah, it is. Back then, it was a little broader, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, well. So you have like a, uh, you, got, you, got more, you have a modern comic here, yeah. Avenging Spider-Man number nine, and then you have what I would consider a classic comic in uh, Flash 175, second Flash Superman race, 7.0, 9.8, and one is retailing higher than the other. Is that a you know sign of where the market is? You know. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of speculating. You know, it's a lot of speculating. This, you know, for the steady money, this is going to go up over right. time, right? But the speculators, they tend to gravitate towards this, being that it is the first uh, Captain Marvel. You know, yeah, Carol Danvers is Captain Marvel, yeah. So they, you know, it's, it's all speculation now. A, a lot of the guys, they're doing it for, um, you know, the guys that are not readers, they're doing it for collecting purposes. So stuff like this is, they see... Hey, you know what? It's 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 well, it's this a sign, but um, it's eight hundred. I hold it two years, you know, sell it for twelve, sell it for fifteen, you know. They do another Captain Marvel movie or something happens where she's pivotal, it, it just shoots up. You're talking about stuff that's central, you know. This is changes in the Marvel universe, you know. It's, it's changes and it's long term changes. It's not it's not like Image came out and they did Young Bloods and. You know, and, 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 and the art was crappy and the story was crappy and then after a couple of years it died. We all know how that went. This is this is central. I sold yesterday six hundred bucks. Um that's why the space is empty. That was my last sale last night. It was um Captain Marvel fourteen, first Kamala Khan. Yeah. Right? I'm doing the same. I just sent that away to uh Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I just sold that yesterday. But like I said, that's pivotal, you know, that's all that's all key stuff. It's, it's, you know, it's not like Youngblood's one, they made a billion copies and everybody grabbed 10 and stuck it away, yeah. you know? These are books, these are books that value, um, that got value after they came out. When they were out, yeah, when, they, wanted, when they were out, nobody wanted them. They just, oh, I'm part of the run. I actually pulled mine, not this one. I, 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 sold, I sold two others. I actually pulled them out of, um, I was making sets at the time. So I had one through 11 and I was gonna complete the set. Cause in my storage, I have boxes of incomplete sets, including like um, the, the Umbrella Academies. Yeah. You know, so I had them in incomplete sets and I go show the show in people's dollar boxes to complete the sets. So it's not my fault is if I'm trying to complete it, something happens, they get a movie deal and it jumps up and all of a sudden the price is crazy. And I'm sitting on, oh, I was trying to complete four sets. I was just missing number four, so I got, Four number ones, four number twos, you know what I mean? <laughs> the preacher back issues don't go for that much. I feel like with the right collector, that would really go for a lot. Well, um, it's not that it, it doesn't go for that much. It's That's the price I have them for. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I got a lot of them. Really? Yeah. I bought I bought two collections, and both of them had like four runs. That's like that's like the boys. Yeah, yeah. You know, all of a sudden, the you know, the, the TV show's coming out, and... and I haven't had any boys number ones in, in the last two years, and all of a sudden, in the last four months, I've had five boys number ones. Really? And I've had whole runs. So I've got, I've got like a run back there, I've got a run in the box in my, um, um, that I took to the show, I've yeah. got a run in my storage, you know, <laughs> Mo just multiple copies. It's like too much. Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got to sell them at a good price to, to get them to move. Yeah, you know? If you have one set, you'll sit and hold it and, yeah. and wait for people, you know, the right person. Well, you got a lot of them. 
You don't want to just take up space. Yeah. So getting to the store, how did you get to the store? Um, like I said, I worked I worked next door at the bar for 20 years, and um, the the owner of the building. Well, you work at, he was my at boss. White Horse yeah, Tavern. Yeah. Is that the one where people like jump on tables and dance? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Not when I was there. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, um, he gave me a sweet deal. The place came up through through tragedy. The place came available. It used to be a cleaners. The guy. Um, the guy that ran the cleaner stepped outside to have a cigarette, cigarette break and dropped dead. Oh. Uh, yeah. So they cleaned it out and my boss offered it to me and we came to an agreement, a very good agreement, so I took it. All right. Yeah. So how's it been? It's been good. It's been good. It's been what, eight months? It's been, months? actually, no, it's been uh, almost a year. June 30th is going to be a year. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I'm working, I'm working on a deal right now. With the uh, with the present owner of the space um, to move to Carmine Street Comics and just um, set up uh, set up shop there as West Village Comics. All right, that's and, you great. Know, yeah, you know I got a couple of sticking points. You know um, I spoke to him about, but um, he says he still wants to have John in the back with his pullers. I have no problem with that, but um, um, once I do once I move there and I change my address and everything on Yelp and and, 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 and Google <laughs> and everything to there, I, you know, it's, it's, it's not being territorial, but it's business sense that uh, Carmine Street has to take this stuff off. You know what I mean? Because you can't be listed Carmine Street Comics and West Village Comics in the same place, but all he's doing is pull this in the back of, you know, the other store. Got it. So... I see how John feels about that. I mean, um, I mean, uh, Jim feels about that because Jim is, you know, being nice to the guy and trying to be helpful, which I, which I understand, but you can only do so much. And now it's time to, to move uh, la laterally and up, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think I think this this will be worthwhile. You know what I mean? You know, I, I I spoke to him. He gave it to me as a. Um, you know, as, as, a, as a chance to, for me to do something for myself after he sold the place, you know, and I'm like, which he did um, last month. But um, like I said, um, I, I have a chance to move upwards because I've been here a year. I've established customers. I've, you know, established clientele. I have a following. So once I make that move over, if it works, you know, right. Um, I'll absorb this guy's customers and have my own customers and you know well, that's good and the foot traffic's crazy so what's the appeal of still being a brick and mortar you know, comic seller? to me I actually get to meet people talk to them shake their hands I had a guy in here yesterday the guy that bought that book he he comes in because he wants to talk he says he doesn't buy his stuff online he comes in he wants to talk he wants to pick my brain he wants to find out about stuff he wants to know what's going on you know after after he left and I closed up, I went around the corner. We sat out there for about two hours having drinks. You know, it's 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 the social aspect. You know, and, and, and a lot of a lot of this is not offered in a lot of stores. Yeah. You know, you go to, you go to the big stores. I'm gonna not gonna name them, but right. people tell me all the time you go to the big stores. They just want you to come in, buy their stuff, and leave. You know, you can't really stand around and hold a conversation as you can at small stores. You know, you go to Rogers Time Machine. You can stand around. Rogers Time Machine is still open. Yeah, he's okay. on. Yeah, he's on ninth and sixth. Yeah, he's but, still going. Yeah, still yeah, going. yeah. But you know, you go over there. You know, you can stand around for a few and, and, and chit chat. It's not come in. Oh, uh, can I help you guys? Every two minutes, can I help you guys? So you actually purchase something and leave. You know. So with with, with me having a store, um, I find out what's going on, and people talk to me and they find out what's going on. You know, it's a human element. What's one of the most positive things, you know, meeting people? I would say, I would say meeting people, you know. Um, as, my, as my girlfriend told me, um, if you're going to make this work, you have to be here because people come for you. Yes. You know, they read the articles, they know about you, they, they come for you. If you have some guy sitting in here and he's just like, well, the books are back there, <laughs> that's, what they, that's not what they want. They want to come in and, 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 and talk to you and see what's going on and, you know, we talk about everything. We talk about movies. You know, at any given time, you can walk in here, and there's this two, three people in here, and we're all having conversations about everything media related. 
That's cool. That's cool. So how do you feel about being like one of the few African American comic book company owners, store owners? I'm I'm like this. I know what I'm doing. It sometimes it winds down to a case of people not knowing what they're doing or not trying to put effort into it. Right. You know, you got to put effort into it. Um, not knocking anybody, but I always said back in the um, uh, back in the day, you know, growing up and grow, growing up and running around in Brooklyn, you know, these guys used to, um, you know, these guys. You know, I, I felt kind of bad for you know African American store owners because everybody else was making it, but then you know you'd open up a store, you'd open up a store, and then you'd um you'd sell weed out the back, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> or, or or you do numbers, it, you know, it's like nothing legitimate. So when I see guys doing legitimate business, right, I, you know, I love it, and to know I'm a part of that now, you know being legitimate instead of, you know. <laughs> but it's true. I, you know, I, I, used to, I used to say, dude, I used to say that I all the time. I grew up in Brooklyn, you know? too, so I know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you, know? you know? Guy opens a store, five minutes later, he's got a... He's got a to make ends meet, he got to sell things. Right, I know. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, but to do it on your own without having to do that, that's the, that's the icing on the cake, you know.